Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about pragmatic failure in intercultural communication. These are my group members and my name is Lan Huang and I will um, talk about the uh, definitions, definitions of pragmatic failure. My name is Meng Xuanli and I'm going to uh, introduce some classifications and some examples of pragmatic failures. My name is Hai Meng Yuan and I'm going to introduce the implementation of um, pragmatic failure in intercultural in language teaching. And I'm Xiaoxin Li and I'm going to talk about some suggestions for teachers and learners in the language classroom to avoid pragmatic failure. Well, to begin with, I'd like to introduce the definition of pragmatics. According to the dictionary, pragmatics is the analysis of language in terms of the situational context within which utterances are made, including the knowledge and the beliefs of the speaker and the relation between speaker and the listener. And according to Crystal, pragmatics is the study of language from the point of views of users, especially of the choices they make. The constraints they encounter in using language in social interaction and the effects their use of language has no other participants in the act of communication. Well, talking about pragmatic competence, according to Chomsky, the pragmatic competence is the knowledge of conditions and manner of appropriate use of language in conformity with various purposes. And according to Penn State, pragmatic competence refers to the ability to use language appropriately in different social situ situations, which includes the purple, first one, the purpose for communicating, often referred to as functions, for example, inviting, apologizing. And the second one is a relative status of those communicating. And the third one is a topic area about which participants are communicating, such as general business, computing, and medicine. And the fourth one is the situation which refers to a physical location such as in a bank, at an airport, in a restaurant. So, pragmatic competence plays a very important role in communication, which enable language learners to uh, use and understand the utterances in order to acquire the ability to communication to come uh, the ability of communicating um, uh, so what is the pragmatic failure uh, according to uh, uh, here are some de some definitions from different people um, uh, according to Thomas a um, very uh, very famous English linguist, uh, pragmatic failure is uh, in inability to understand what is meant by and uh, what is said. And according to He in 1988, pragmatic failure is a, a failure to achieve the desired communicative effect in communication. Well, in 1997, He developed his theory, which is Pragmatic failures are not the errors in condition in diction, but those mistakes failing to for communication because of the infelicitous style, incompatible expressions, and improper habit. Well, there are um, some other definitions for pragmatic failure, such as according to Cruz, pragmatics goes beyond the meaning of syntactic form and semantics. And according to Bomer and Rainsberg, pragmatics goes beyond the meaning of syntactic form and semantics. So uh, the next part, my partner will introduce the classification of pragmatic failure. Uh, now I'm going to introduce the uh, classification and uh, some examples of pragmatic failures in intercultural communication. So according to Leach in 1983, basically there are two main types of uh, pragmatic failures. 
the pragma linguistic failure and social pragmatic failure. So for the first one, the pragma linguistic failure, it means that um, L2 learners and non-native speakers cannot transfer their linguistic strategies from their L1 to L2 successfully, or when they cannot it just express their meaning correctly. So here are some examples of uh, pragma linguistic failures. So first one is about apologize. So this uh, for, for those erasedly English learners, when they are making some apologize to others, this, they will seldom use, use some intensifiers like very deeply or really in their apologize, which may make the apologize um, like uh, sounds insincere or not very genuine to those native speakers. And uh, the second one is about compliments. For some Egyptian English learners, when they are made paying some compliments to others, they tend to make some innovative or creative metaphors and uh, comparisons like, uh, like this sentence, you look like a bridegroom today. So this may sound very puzzling or weird to native speakers. And uh, the last one is about greetings. For adult uh, English learners, this question, where are you from, is not, um, as, uh, it's not like uh, an invasive request for personal information like uh, uh, those native speakers all usually do, but uh, the Arabs uh, took it as take it as um, just a, in a preliminary greeting to others because of their unique uh, because of the, 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 the failure to transfer the linguistic uh, strategy from the L2 to L1 uh, L1 to L2. The second one is the social pragma pra social pragmatic failure. So this one is the result of a lack of social cultural knowledge, and this lack of social cultural knowledge will affect uh, those non-native speakers and L2 learners. Um, as they, they will affect their uh, understanding and the linguistic production of their L2, and they will fail to vary their linguistic language output in their speak acts according to different situations and social considerations. And here are some examples of this kind of pragmatic failure. So about it's all about compliments. Let's just take Chinese and America as example firstly. So as Chinese, when we when we uh, receive some compliments from others, we tend to reject it immediately. Um, for example, uh, if someone said to me that uh, your clothes is I, I love your clothes is suit you so much. I can just say no, it's not. Uh, according to which is according to the modesty maxim by Leach in 1983, and this will lead leading uh, this will lead to some misunderstanding when Chinese are interacting with interacting with American because when American receive some uh, com compliments from others, they tend to just agree with them with uh, thank you according to the agreement maxim by Leach, so with, which is because of their unique uh, social cultural background. And uh, also for Spaniards, when Spaniards um, make, it, make some uh, compliments to others, the sentence like uh, what a good person you are and how punctual you are are uh, usually used by them. But this may sound very embarrassing, ironic or insincere to those uh, native speakers which is not the normal way that they make compliments. So here are some uh, uh, cl classifications and uh, some examples of pragmatic failures. And the second, the third part is about uh, the implications of pragmatic failures in language teaching. The first point of pragmatic failure in language teaching is why pragmatic importance in language teaching there are two reasons. The first reason is that it provides opportunity to learn and discover how native speakers of the foreign language behave and act in different situations. And second one is to understand others' culture and behavior and avoid pragmatic failure in intercultural communication. Boxer states, students must not stretch their linguist not only stretch their linguistic ability, but use all areas of their developing communicative competence. It helps in raising 
their prophetic awareness and contributes to successful intercultural communication. However, as John indicates, pragmatic is a subject that is an indispensable part of language learning, but is received insufficient attention in acquisition. In the teaching process, it's the responsibility of language teacher to improve the learner's linguistic and pragmatic com com communicative competence. However, language teachers often ignore pragmatics and focus on grammar, which leads to the student to pragmatic failure and communication breakdowns. Thomas gives two reasons of why language teaching will be leaving pragmatic aside. For the first one, is pragmatic description has still not obtained the precision level of grammar. That's it, that is to say, the grammatical teaching is not as developed as, as the pragmatic teaching is not as developed as grammatical teaching. The second one is pragmatic language in use. It's a delicate area and it's not yet very clear how it can be taught. So what should teacher do? Thomas gives three suggestions. The first one is to develop students' meta-pragmatic ability. For example, the, the ability to study and to discuss language use in a concise manner to avoid intercultural communication failure. The second one is to make their student aware about possible intercultural pragmatic differences between their first language and their second language. The third one is that effective teaching reduces the cultural interference and protects the student from being impolite, inefficient, and inappropriate in their behavior in the, in the target language. Then I will introduce a module of teaching methodology to the teaching of social cultural norms. It can be a reference to the pragmatic in the language teaching, Rohan proposed a conversation analysis as a tool in the teaching of conversation and social cultural norms. Basically, it's aimed to draw together and expand student knowledge and understanding of the outer pragmatic failure in conjunction with pragmatic transfer from the L1. So it's the process of the model. The first one is the awareness raising phase. The concept draw from the conversation analysis are first observed from authentic and unscript video conversation and then is go to the reflective phase. Student discuss the con concept in relation to their experience with L2 as well as L1 about how these concepts are or are not applied in their L1. At this point, the discussion become cross-cultural. In the experimental phase, student experience this concept in pairs or in groups through role play simulation activities, and as a result, um, students often discover new issues, which may entail looking at new elements or concepts. These issues are raised during the introspective phase, where an evaluation of student conversation conducts. In addition, in the experimental phase, students may produce a pragmatic transfer from their L1 onto, onto the English, which is first identified in the and evaluate during the introspective phase. And the last part is the cultural evaluation phase. Students reflect on this by contracting L1, social cultural norms, with those of L2, and the reason for the mismatch between the norms of L1 and L2 are explored. This can be achieved by looking at politeness theory and how politeness is mapped onto the language. So um, my a group member will introduce the fourth section and in summary. Thank you. Well, um, I'm going to talk about the final part of our presentation. Uh, it's about the suggestions to avoid pragmatic failure in the language classroom. But before that, I'd like to talk about the pragmatic abilities of students in the intercultural communication. There are five abilities according to June's research in 2002 and uh, they are the abilities about to carry out speech eyes to produce the non-lecture meanings and the plating plating strategies and uh, discursive functions as well as how to use culture knowledge yeah and um, according to Beckman's research in 1990 um, students should have the communicative competence when they learn the English as a second language. 
and they are the grammatical competence, discourse competence, and the pragmatic competence. Well, my partner already introduced that pragmatic is the is the important part for the language learning. Um, but uh, nowadays, some uh, now some language teachers are concerned more about the grammatical competence and the discourse competence and ignore the pragmatic competence. But it is has the uh, equal role with the first, uh, first and second competence. Well, um, according to three researchers, I'd like to talk about the specific suggestions to avoid pragmatic failure in the language classroom and intercultural communication. Uh, they are in the they are uh, from the four perspective, and the fourth perspective is the curriculum and the syllabus. So teacher can change their class model and add some history, culture, and pragmatic knowledge into the class to give the um, learners some more pragmatic knowledge and feeling in the intercultural communication. And the second one is uh, according to the learning environment and classroom interaction. Well, uh, teachers uh, could provide more chances to learners to communicate with native English speakers, and they can uh, have more interactive activities in the classroom that give the students opportunities to uh, interact with teachers and students. And uh, the third perspective is from the after classroom activities and the teaching materials. Well, teachers and learners also need to read more popular uh, generals reference before and after classroom and to enhance some uh, uh, economy, history, lecture, religion, and anything else about the target language. And uh, they can also know more about the uh, thinking and behavior in the English country of the local people. And the first perspective is about the teacher's education and the social network. Well, um, Zhang and Li suggest that a teacher should keep on studying to keep on up with the uh, changing of the English language. And they could also um, ask some support from the social network because it includes a large amount of English language knowledge. Well, um, these are the suggestions, and in summary, my partners already gave the definitions of pragmatics, pragmatic competence, and pragmatic failure. And they also introduced the classification and the importance of the pragmatics in the language teaching and learning. Well, in, uh, finally, I gave some suggestions in the language teaching to avoid pragmatic failure uh, from uh, teacher and students. So, well, this is our presentation. And if you have any questions, please contact us. Uh, thank you.